What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, shout out to you. Thanks for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, welcome. Please get down there and hit subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the uploads. So as you can see around me right here, we have a clutter problem. We have parts and tools and all sorts of stuff piled up on the ground right here. And then now in this room right here, we are basically at max capacity. As you can see, we got a giant box right here. We actually got our AIT wide body kit for the coupe there. One piece did come just a little bit damaged. I think I can fix it, but I emailed them to see if they wanted to fix it, their issue because it wasn't my fault. I even took a video unboxing it, you know, to cover myself and they just, they didn't reply. So clearly their customer service is garbage, but hopefully the kit fits sort of kind of all right. Cause you know, I don't know how I feel about them right now, but yeah. All of these parts are mainly for both these cars right here. We have a lot of stuff for the blue car. We have the engine and trans. We also have front and rear subframes with the diff in the back and the steering rack in the front. We have all four knuckles for this car. Like we have a lot of stuff. And then everything from this blue car is gonna get transferred over to the coupe except for the dash because I do like the facelift dash and I like like the sort of kind of like modern classic look of these dashes. So I want to put one of these in the coupe and I've had this here for forever and I really need to get it in. <laughs> that came out wrong, but you get the point. We also have the wiring harness and the dash bar over there. So we have pretty much every big piece that we need. I have read on the forums that it is a little difficult. There are some tabs that don't line up that you have to, you know, make it work, which I'm fairly confident that I can do, but this dash is not gonna stay like this. I wanna do all the work right now and just put the dash on temporarily in the car so I can get rid of the tan one that's in the car and either give it away or throw it away or whatever. And I wanna do it temporarily because I will be flocking this dash. I'm going for like a whole like rally theme, so I really want to flock a dash. I've never done it and I know it's gonna be a fun experience. I have everything to do it already. I know I haven't been posting lately. Last week, I got hit with a powder coating job that turned into a nightmare and it literally took me almost the whole week. I was stressed out, wasn't coming out right, I had to keep stripping it and redoing it, but it finally came out okay. And then we had to work on the Jeep, and then my cousin came over and we did some work on his car, which was basically the whole day. I had to weld on a new uh, jack, leg i guess you can call it for my dad's trailer and then my mom came over yesterday and i couldn't get her car done so i'm gonna have to work on hers next weekend but like stuff has just been piling up and i know i'm just jibber jabbering with you guys but i just want to let you know that i've been super busy and i've been wanting to make videos but i just haven't had the time to but now that i'm all caught up like i said all i have to do is wait for next weekend to work on my mom's car we're good to go. So let's get the ball rolling. So we are gonna be getting rid of the whole dash, the whole center console, like everything basically, except for the steering wheel for now. I do need an aftermarket steering wheel because I need the quick release because getting out of here is super uncomfortable with these bucket seats. So definitely need to get that taken care of. But oh my God, look how ginormous this freaking hood scoop looks, that's so crazy. It didn't bring the kick panel down here, which is better for me because it makes my job easier. So we have to take off obviously the bottom stuff like the glove box first and center console and then we can worry about the top. This thing even has this, look, I think this is for the recirculating. You can hear it go off but I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be like that. It has this weird switch on here that I have no idea what it's for. This car is just all around janky, but like I said, the motor and trans from the RS is coming into this car, so I know that the speedos on these cars are cable driven, and on the RS it's electronic, so the speedometer is not gonna work on the cluster, but once I swap everything over, it'll be just plug and play. I will be getting rid of the heater core and air box and blower and all that. Like, it's just gonna be wiring 
and dash bar behind the actual dash pad so it should be easy because I'm eliminating a bunch of stuff and really I just I'm just putting the shell in you know so let's just get to it We got everything on the bottom and on the sides completely removed from this. As you can see, we have all these parts right here. I'm pretty jealous that the older style preface lift and presses came with the dual cup holder standard. So we actually have to go to Forrester's on our on the facelift side and get them out of those. But I'm gonna stick with my plan of undoing every single nut and bolt that I see, and eventually it's gonna come right out. I got it pretty much unbolted all the way around. I can just pull it off. Two things I learned. <laughs> One, this cable was in fact for the recirc, so it's kind of janky. And then two, I did not know that these pre-facelift, it's so easy to just change out the bulbs. I know a lot of people like to go with LEDs on these, and I did not know it was this easy on these. I'm pretty sure it's not that easy on the facelift ones, but I'll have to check it out. For now, I have to drop the steering column and just go around and cut all these zip ties that they left around. I have to pinch all of these tabs, get all this harness off, and then I think I can pull it all out. All right, the dash has officially left the building or the car and it definitely chewed right through my gloves but it's out now I didn't have to cut any of the wiring so I know that's good in case I need it which I don't think I will but it's there next on the to-do list is to take this dash bar out once we have that out we can take the air box and blower and everything out of the way then we can put our new dash bar in for the facelift dash and then I guess start mocking up the dash and seeing how we can get it to bolt up. One thing I will say though, taking a dash out with these kind of seats is not the move. Like it's never the move, never gonna be the move. Don't do it. It's one of those things where I'm like, I should take them out. And then in my head, I'm stubborn and I'm like, nah, I'll just, Keep working around it it's gonna get easier it doesn't get easier like it sucks it's they're in your way they're hard you can't get comfortable in them but I mean we got the dash out so it's hard it's doable but it's not the move So dash bar is out. We need to get all of that out. Here are the two dash bars. So the one down here is for the RS or, I mean, I it came out of an RS, but it's for a facelift. And that is the one that just came out, the pre-facelift one. The sun is super bright. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but there are definitely 
some differences. Let me see if I can get out of the way. So just in the two bars down there in the center you can see. And then right here is also different. We got these rings right here on the new one that the old one doesn't have. So they're a little bit different. So I want to go ahead and mock it up, see if it'll bolt up to see if I have to do any changes. And once I know it's good to go, then I'm gonna pull it back out and I wanna spray paint it because I don't want this rusty look. It's not in bad condition, actually. The one that came out is actually worse and it's probably because the one that came out is a lot older than the one going in. So once we know that it's in and we get it painted, then it'll go on for good. It has gotten super hot, but check this out. The dash bar pretty much bolts up except for down here in the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these holes longer. And then if I have to use a washer on the bolt, I will. These are actually longer bolts. These are the ones that came out of it super short. These are about this long. And that's what I'm gonna do to force it to go on. And then after that, I think we will be good. The steering column right here, it's actually very different and didn't want to bolt in. So what I did was I took the holder off, the holding bracket off, but I believe now that I look at this that the threads on the bolt were left-hand threads and I was actually going counterclockwise thinking it was a normal thread. I am gonna see if I can source a facelift bracket right here and try to throw it on and see if it works. If it does, cool. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to get a whole new steering column out of a facelift, but I want to try the first method first. So if you wanna learn if you can just get away with throwing the bracket on, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned. So while we have the dash bar drying, I don't know if it's going to take all day, but we're going to go ahead and start removing everything here. We're also gonna be deleting all the airbag stuff because you know what they say, if you don't need it, delete it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right guys, dash bar is in. It looks so weird installed like that because it's so like empty behind it. Like there's so much room back there for just about anything, but we got it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the dash on there, at least just to rest it in the, in the car for now to, you know, get it out of the garage because a big reason why I started doing this today is because there's too much clutter in here and I need to start doing some cleaning. And by cleaning, I mean actually installing all the parts that I have here. So we're getting rid of that, but there's a giant mess now back here with those parts. I guess I am taking one step forward and two steps back because that's a lot more than what is going in there. We're gonna get rid of that stuff anyway, so that's not a problem. This stuff, obviously I couldn't get rid of because I need to install it. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it on and see how it fits. So dash fits obviously it was made for this generation car and we got the right dash bar but we just temporarily have it on for now i have the two nuts in the middle just to hold it in place it looks like i'm gonna have to be cutting these hoops off because i'm not using the glove box and those hoops down there as well because i'm not going to be running the kick panel i'm just going to be running the top part of the dash so my only concern now is will it start and will it drive 
and will that airbag explode now that I took everything off so I'm gonna give it power and let's see what happens so it started but it shut off so I don't think it's happy I'm gonna go ahead and try again and if it starts I'm gonna go ahead and start moving it right now all right guys I got it to move under its own power but it would only turn on and run for about 10 seconds at a time so i had to start it four times just to get it in the right spot but she is chilling in there now so we got the facelift dash on we are going to put the airbag delete cubby up here we might even throw the compass on here and we definitely need to get the steering column bracket and also an aftermarket steering wheel with a quick release so I can take that out of my way I don't know how long this video is going to be but I'm going to end it off right here because this is a lot of work to just pile into one video so we are going to be pulling the dash off next time and flocking it as well as trying to fit the airbag delete cubby right here so this one right here is actually for a right hand drive car so I've heard that there's like some gaps when you install them on a left hand drive dash but I got it for super cheap so that's why I got it because if it was going to be like normal price I was not going to spend that money. But I got it really cheap so I got it for that. I do have a brand new left hand drive dash cubby for the blue car because obviously everything has to be perfect with that one. The coupe is a thrasher so if I find parts cheap I get them if not I don't worry about it. So yeah we're going to be doing that and I think I'm going to have to weld some brackets to hold the dash in place. So I think we're gonna be doing that as well. And then after that, I have to worry about the wiring. I think for now, what I'm gonna do is take the wiring out of my old pre-facelift dash and just hook everything up so that the car runs. Cause like I said, right now it only runs about 10 seconds at a time and then it dies. So for now I'm gonna do that. I do have the full dash harness out of a manual RS that's gonna go in to that car I just don't want to do it yet because I'm not throwing the motor in it yet so once we get to that part I will pull the motor and trans out of this car and throw it in that car and then everything should be plug-and-play so for now we're just gonna throw the old harness on just so we can move it around whenever we need to without having to jump it every 10 seconds so yeah that's gonna do it for this one so if you like it make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and while you're down there hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on the future videos we have on the dash conversion but let me get off your screen so as always keep moving forward and stay on the gas